You're watching Auto du Monde and we visit Egypt. Welcome on Auto du Monde. If you like our content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to like our videos. In this new episode, we continue our visit of Alexandria. We will visit the catacombs, the column of Pompeii. We'll see the old walls of the city, Collège Saint Mark, and the Mustafa Kemal tombs. This second day in Alexandria starts again at the Cecil Hotel, from where we take a cab to the archaeological site of Qom el Shokafa. The site of the catacombs of Qom el Shokafa is one of the most famous in Alexandria. In fact, Qom el Shokafa means Mount of Splinters, since the area contained a mountain of fragments of terracotta oak. According to legend, it was rediscovered by a donkey that accidentally fell into one of its access well. At the entrance of the site, the visitors can admire impressive painted tombs, which date from the same period. But the site is best known for its funerary necropolis, which is located 30 meters below ground level and was dug out of the rock around the 2nd century AD. As you can see, we are in front of the beautiful tomb in the catacomb. It's definitely a nice place to visit in Alexandria. We continue our visit. The place is singular since the tombs present the combination of Egyptian, Greek and Roman cultures. These catacombs are part of a group of funerary sites that are scattered throughout Alexandria. We are more precisely in the western necropolis of the city. Of the three levels, only two are accessible to tourists since the third level is now completely underwater. Another must-see site in Alexandria is the ruins of the Serapion, an ancient Greek temple built by Ptolemy III in 230 BC. Today, the site is better known under the name of Pompey's Column. This is because not much remain of the Ptolemaic temple, which was heavily looted over the centuries, if we exclude the impressive column that still stands on the site. And this column is wrongly attributed to Pompey since it was erected in the honor of the emperor Diocletian around 380. We are now entering in what remains of the Serapion, a temple dedicated to the city's patron god Serapis. The place was so important in antiquity that it was qualified as the daughter of the famous library of Alexandria. It is because it was also a deposit of document that those cavities have probably sheltered. Apparently, the Serapium was closed around 325 by the Emperor Constantine and destroyed completely around 391 during religious riots. Legends attribute the destruction of the pagan temple to the Christians of Alexandria. Yes, only the column has survived. It is said to be one of the largest monolithic columns ever erected. From near or far, it will dazzle you by its magnificence. One feels very small when contemplating this masterpiece of antiquity. All around, you will see the remains of buildings or bats that once stood on the site. 
it is a must see on any visit to the city. After the visit of these two major sites, we took advantage of it to walk in the heart of the city, crossing in the passage the soccer stadium. As the Greco-Roman Museum has been closed since 2005, we made a stop at the National Museum of Alexandria, which has a number of objects recovered over the centuries. We repeat it, but unlike Rome, for example, there is not much left of the ancient city of Alexandria except for the few sites we visited. Even the walls that you see are in fact the remains of the city walls in the Muslim era, that these walls were all preserved. Modern urban planning has done the rest of the work so that today we only find portion of the walls that once protected the city against the enemy. To see them, head to Al Shalalat Park, where archaeologists are currently conducting excavation in order to find the Soma, the building that housed the body of Alexander the Great in ancient times. It is also in this area that Egyptian government make a nod to history by erecting a statue in honor of the founder of the city, Alexander the Great, who rides his horse, Bucephalus. After lunching at McDonald's, we decided to do as the young Alexandrians do and stroll through the Shadby district where we find the best educational institution of the city. We then headed to the St. Mark's College, a Catholic school founded in 1928 by the Brothers of the Christian Schools. The private institution, which still has French as its main language of instruction, has 2,600 students. The impressive building located in the heart of the city is worth a visit. If you wish to visit the school, however, you must make an appointment in advance. Visit. Located a short walk from St. Mark's College, Shatby Cemetery is another example of the city's necropolises. Not much remains here, but the cemetery contains the oldest known graves in the city. These tombs are believed to date back to 280 BC. A few minutes on the site is enough to take the measure of the history, the most interesting tombs being partly flooded. Be careful. After having visited the center of Alexandria, we undertook a small stroll toward the east of the city. The residential district allowed us to understand the life of the citizens and contained several mosques and churches like the Catholic Church of the Sacred Heart. We continued the rest of the way in a local cab to another little known attraction. Probably the least known of all Alexandria archaeological sites because of its location far from the city center, the necropolis of Mustafa Kemal is no less one of the city's most fascinating discoveries. Located in the Rushdie district, the site has four underground tombs dating from the 3rd and the 2nd century BC. So we are in front of the nicest 
tomb of the Mustafa Kemal archaeological site. If you visit Alexandria, you have no choice to visit that place. Indeed, this tomb and its courtyard are famous for its Doric columns. You can also see the sphinxes on pedestals and the painting frieze that represent ladies and horsemen in a libation scene. It is clearly the best preserved tomb accessible to tourists. After this visit, we headed even further east to the seaside area of the city. We were lucky enough to come across a city landmark, the Stanley Bridge, which hides a popular private beach. The east of the ancient capital contains several hotels and private beaches that make the Egyptians happy during the summer season. We ended the day with a coffee at the San Stefano Grand Plaza before returning to the hotel by cab. The cab is another great way to see the city. Thanks for watching that new episode of Auto du Monde in Egypt. In our next episode, we'll visit the desert of the Wadi Natrum and the oldest monasteries in the world.